welcome to my channel. I am Angela Berger. If you haven't been to my channel before, I cover missing person cases and true crime cases. So today we have the story of 39-year-old Maya May Millet, who has been missing since Thursday, January 7th of this year. And she disappeared under some kind of mysterious strange circumstances so we're going to get in that into that today and i would like to hear what you think about this case so before we get into maya's case let's talk a little bit about what um, she is like as a person and you know you can really see that maya is an adventurous person who's full of life and has like this hunger to explore the world um, she also is avid about fitness on her Facebook page, she would post a lot and she would post frequently about her hikes and track her miles, how many miles she hiked. She enjoys singing and playing the guitar and she would like to play guitar for her three children who are four, nine, and 11. She also loves to go hiking with them. She had many photos of her children on her site, on her Facebook site. She has a Jeep and she was very active in a Jeep club. They would have meetups and go off-roading. And she seemed to also be very involved in different charity events with the Jeep club. So she also enjoyed riding dirt bikes. She really got this picture of someone who was really into fitness, very adventurous, liked doing all these things. Um, she, was just, she is just full of life. I don't want to say was. She is a defense contractor at the Naval Base in San Diego. And according to her husband, Larry, she loves her job and really enjoyed going to work there every day. When things were bad at home, things were good at work. Maya and her husband, Larry, had been high school sweethearts and they've been married for 21 years. Like I said before, the two have three children who are four, four year old boy and then nine and 11 year old girls. In an interview, Larry talked about how for the past year, um, things have been strained in his relationship with Maya. It seemed that they weren't getting along. Maya started out going, going out more with her friends, that's according to Larry. And after arguments, she would often go out to let off some steam. So Maya and Larry had a spacious home, and when they would argue, Larry would give Maya space. And in the interview, he made a point of saying that she was the one who needed the space, um, not him. So just tell me, so you got into an argument, and then um, the last time you saw her was actually in the house? Yes, okay. Thursday. So she yeah. did, she, and she didn't take a vehicle? No. No never. one saw her leave? Um, no, but... On Friday, um, I could still hear, her, but I didn't physically see her when I got home. But that's like normal too, because we, you know, we have lots of bedrooms and two-story house, and you know, we kind of like, well, I give her space. So, but that's why every time someone says um, Thursday, yes, it's physically, you know, or you know, visually see her, but uh, for me, it's uh, Friday, Friday night. You know, I can hear her, like wrestling around making dinner for herself in another bedroom and I'm sleeping with the kids in another bedroom. Okay. So upstairs and she's downstairs kind of deal, like kind of like a roommate um, thing. It's okay. kind of like giving each other space. Well, sure. I, I don't need the space. She always wants the space. Got it. They had enough rooms that they could sleep in separate bedrooms when they weren't getting along. I do find it kind of telling that Maya posted a ton of pictures on Facebook of herself on these Jeep off-roadings, mm. doing her hiking, uh, lots of pictures of her children, but I couldn't find any pictures of her husband um, on her Facebook. So I do think that that's telling kind of, you know, maybe something, they were definitely having problems, you know, in their relationship. And Larry did say that in the interview. So on Thursday, January 7th of this year, which is 2021, the night before Maya disappeared, she and her husband got into an argument. And we don't know what the argument was about, or really any of the details. Larry said that he decided to give Maya some space. 
claiming, again, that she and not he was the one who needed the space. And since their house was kind of spacious, it was possible for the two of them to both be in the house without interacting. On Friday, he said he left the home with their son, and the two girls were left at home with Maya because they were doing homeschooling. And when he came back, he said that she, he thought Maya was still there. He could hear her downstairs. He thought she was in the kitchen, but he didn't actually see Maya on Friday. Maya's daughter's 11th birthday was coming up soon, so the family had a plan to go on this family trip to Big Bear Mountain Resort uh, for the birthday. Maya and her five other siblings were in a group text discussing the trip. And then on Friday, so this was the day after Maya was last seen, Friday, January 8th, a question about the upcoming trip was asked in this group text. And everybody responded to this question except for Maya. Her siblings thought that this was really weird because usually Maya was the first one to respond to to text and she didn't respond at all so the family then was concerned so they tried to get in touch with maya they tried to get in touch with her husband and they even reached out to the children but they couldn't get a hold of anyone at all and larry her husband said that he didn't actually physically see her on friday but he thought he heard her downstairs in the kitchen um, when he was upstairs with the, with the children. Maya's brother and brother lived in the area, so since he was concerned and they couldn't get a hold of anyone, they, he decided to go over to Maya's house to check on her. Larry was there, and Larry told him that Maya had been in her room. So remember, she had her own separate room, and he went to the room, but the door was locked, so Maya's brother knocked on the door. There was no response. So he just assumed that she was sleeping, and he left without, without seeing her. On Saturday, January 9th, Maya's parents came by the house to check on her, and she still wasn't responding to any phone calls or any knocks on her door. Then her husband, Larry, found the keys to her room. They unlocked the door, and they went in, and Maya wasn't there. No sign of her. Her family wanted to file a missing person report, but Larry wanted to wait. He said he wanted to wait because he was concerned if he involved the authorities and Maya wasn't actually missing that she would be very angry. He had said when he involved her family in the past, when she would kind of leave to let off some steam, that she would get angry. Um, so the family waited until 1 a.m. and Maya still hadn't come home, so at that time, they reported her as missing. Okay, remember the last time she had actually been seen by anyone was Thursday, January 7th. She was reported missing on the 9th. Or actually the 10th because it was, you know, early in the Sunday morning hours. And then Sunday, January 10th was her daughter's 11th birthday party. And Maya did not show up. She didn't text or call her daughter. There was absolutely nothing, no word from her. And at this point, this is when her family, you know, became incredibly concerned and knew that something was very wrong because even if Maya was mad at her husband, there was no way that she would let her daughter's birthday pass by without so much as a word. Just tell me, how, how worried are you, and what do you think happened? Where do you um, think she is? I wasn't really worried. Um, you know, I was kind of, like, worried, but, you know, I wasn't, like, totally worried until the birthday. You know, I was thinking, okay, maybe, you know, like, she's just blowing up steam, just, like, you know, doing what she told me before, where she wants everyone to leave her alone. Because before, I used to get her family involved, like, hey, she's not coming home, you know, and then, why would you call my family? You know, I just want everyone to leave me the thing alone. But, you know, I was like, okay, this time I think she stepped up her game. You know, like, she's blocking everyone. But now that, you know, she missed our daughter's birthday, and, like, with all this pressure with the media and everything, um, there's something keeping her from contacting us. So 
um, my sister-in-law is, you know, I don't really try to think about that stuff because it's like mind numbing, but I'm trying to stay positive. But, you know, when people are telling me, hey, you know, maybe she got into an accident while she's hiking, you know, and she can't get a phone, like, well, her phone would be right next to her, you know what I mean? Like, she wears Fabletics, so it would be in her pocket. So let's look at this and get into some opinions. In my opinion, I don't think there's any way that Maya would have willingly missed her daughter's birthday without a text or a call. Leads me to strongly believe that something happened to her that's preventing her from making contact or getting home. And she's, you know, it's against her will. Maya lived very close to a park, the Mount San Miguel Park, and the Mother Miguel Mountain Summit. So this picture shows some of the rocky terrain that's in the area. Maya enjoyed hiking, so it really isn't out of the question that she might have gone for a hike in the nearby park to, to get away from her husband, to let off some steam, kind of clear her head. We know she didn't drive because both of her vehicles were left at home. And I think if one of her friends would have picked her up, they would have told somebody by now. You know, oh, I picked her up and we went here. Um, but we don't have any of that, anyone coming forward. So I would assume that if Maya did leave the house, that she left on foot. And she may have gone to the park. So maybe Maya got injured and she's stuck somewhere where there was some type of accident. It has been 19 days. So hopefully if this is the case, she can be rescued and returned to her family. You know, and that would certainly be uh, the best case scenario that she, you know, some type of accident happened, that she's okay and she can be found and rescued. However, when one of Maya's brother-in-laws was asked if there were any red flags, I'll show you the clip, he said that there were, but he didn't go into detail because of the investigation. Were there any signs? And this was his response. There were a couple red flags, but I, I'm going to let that to the police to investigate. I'm not going to talk about it um, just because it's under, it's under investigation at this moment. So we do know that Maya and her husband weren't getting along. We don't know any details and anything would just be speculation at this point. Um, so maybe he, the brother-in-law, was just referring to them not getting along or, you know, maybe it's something more. I do find it odd that Maya's husband didn't answer the phone and that none of the children um, answered their phones. So I don't know, because the family was trying to reach out to all of them that day when Maya wasn't answering. I don't know if, the, if some of the children have their own phones, but it just seems weird that they would ignore text um, about their mother. So it's a little... A little strange. Don't know what to think about that. And Larry simply assumed that Maya was in her room um, and that she was downstairs without actually seeing her. His reason for this and not wanting to contact authorities was because he wanted to give her space and he didn't want to, to make her mad. But it could be a real reason or it could just be an excuse to buy him some time. And I've included the link to her husband's interview in the information below um, so that you can listen to it and get your own impression. Um, it does seem that, you know, he's kind of making the case that Maya was going out drinking more than normal. And he said that sometimes she wouldn't be home until 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So I think he's kind of setting up that maybe, maybe that was the case and something happened to her. But what I really do find concerning about this whole thing is that there isn't any surveillance showing Maya leaving the home. And obviously she's not in the home. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there's not um, surveillance, but I would think that there would be surveillance from most angles. You know, given the nice neighborhood, I would think those people would have security cameras. What do you guys think about that? And also, do you think that it's odd that 
her husband didn't actually see her, just assumed that she was in the house? Or do you think that that is maybe normal given that they weren't getting along and they were kind of being like roommates giving each other space? So that all being said, I do hope that Maya is still out there and that she can be found and brought to safety. She has all of her siblings that love her. She has three children that need her and miss her. The family has asked that everyone um, say a prayer for Maya at 5.01 at night, every night, because Maya's birthday is May 1st. Okay, so that's 5.01 every night. And if you don't pray, maybe send positive thoughts um, her way. So at the time of Maya's disappearance, she was five foot two, 110 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information on Maya's whereabouts should contact the Chula Vista Police Department at 619-691-5151. And her family is running a Facebook page called Help Find May, and I posted the link in the information below. So for constant updates, I suggest that you follow that. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would ask that you do that. Click the subscribe button because um, I do cover a lot of missing person cases, often ones that don't have a lot of media attention. And if you would like to help spread the word and raise awareness about those cases, please subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.